7th grade open up resources illustrative mathematics unit 6 lesson 11 using equations to solve problems problem number one from 7th grade unit 5 lesson 9 find the value of each variable a a times 3 equals negative 30 since negative 10 times 3 equals negative 30 a equals negative 10 Let's check our answer. Negative 30 divided by 3 equals negative 10. So negative 10 times 3 equals negative 30. B. Negative 9 times B equals 45. Since negative 9 times negative 5 equals positive 45, then B equals negative 5. Let's double check. 45 divided by negative 9 equals negative 5. So B equals negative 5. C. Negative 89 times 12 equals C. Well, a negative times a positive equals a negative, and 89 times 12 equals 1,068. So C equals negative 1,068. D. D times 88 equals negative 88,000. Negative 88,000 divided by positive 88 equals D. And since negative 88,000 divided by 88 equals negative 1,000, then D equals negative 1,000. Let's double check. Negative 1,000 times 88 equals negative 88,000. So we're correct. D equals negative 1,000. Problem number two. Match each equation to its solution and to the story it describes. A. 5x minus 7 equals 3. We need to add 7 to both sides of the equal sign. That leaves us with 5x equals 10. Next, we're going to divide both sides by 5. That leaves us with 1x or x equals 2. Since x equals 2, the solution for equation A would be the third solution because its value is 2. I think the story described by equation A is the club activity story. It puts members into five groups. After seven students left, that would be the minus seven. There are only three students left to finish the activity. That would be equals three. The how many students were in each group, that would be x. The five x represents five groups of two students. That would be 10 students. When seven students leave, that would be 10 minus seven, or three. B. 7 equals 3 times 5 plus x. We can rewrite that as 7 equals 15 plus 3x. Next, we have to subtract 15 from both sides. That leaves us with negative 8 equals 3x. Finally, we'll divide both sides by 3. That leaves us with negative 8 over 3 equals x, or x equals negative 8 thirds. The solution to equation B would be the second solution, negative 8 thirds. I think that the story described by equation B is the story about building guitars. In the story, it says now it takes seven hours to build three guitars. That's the seven in the equation. The story also mentioned that before the reduction in time, it took five hours to build one guitar. That's the five in the equation. And the x in the equation represents the last sentence in the story. By how much did they reduce the time it takes to build each guitar? Since x equals negative 8 thirds, that means that they reduce the amount of time that it takes to build each guitar by 8 thirds. The term reduce means that they're subtracting 8 thirds from the time it used to take to build one guitar. C. 3x plus 5 equals negative 7. First, we need to subtract 5 from both sides. That leaves us with 3x equals negative 12. Finally, we divide both sides by 3. That leaves us with 1x or x equals negative 4. So x equals negative 4. The solution for equation C is the first solution, negative 4. The story that best matches equation C is the temperature story. The first line in the story says the temperature is negative seven, and that's represented in the equation by 
equals negative 7. In the second line of the story, it says that the temperature tripled. Tripled is represented in the equation by the 3, and the temperature is represented in the equation by the x. 3x means 3 times the temperature, or triple the temperature. It also mentions that the temperature rose 5 degrees, and that's represented in the equation with plus 5. Finally, equation D. 1 third times x plus 7 equals 5. My first thought was to multiply 1 third times x plus 1 third times 7. That would have left me with 1 third x plus 7 thirds equals 5. Then I would have had to have subtracted 7 thirds from both sides, which means I would have had to subtract 7 thirds from 5. And then I thought of an easier way to solve for x. By turning the 1 third into a 1, by making it 3 times greater. That means I have to multiply both sides by 3. 1 third times 3 and 5 times 3. That leaves me on the left hand side with 1 times x plus 7, which is the same as x plus 7. And on the right hand side, 5 times 3, which is 15. So now the equation reads x plus 7 equals 15. And finally, we subtract 7 from both sides, and we have x equals 8. The solution for equation D is the fourth solution, 8. The story that equation D describes is the roses story. It says in the story that Jada has 7 pink roses. Those 7 pink roses are represented in the equation by the positive 7, or the plus 7, located inside the parentheses. Then it goes on to say that she has some white roses. That's an unknown number, which is represented in the equation with the variable x. And then it says that she gave all them away to each of her three favorite teachers. That means that all these roses were divided among three different teachers, and that's represented by the one-third on the outside of the parentheses. It said that there were five roses given to each of those three teachers, and those five roses are represented by the equals five in the equation. Problem number three. The baby giraffe weighed 132 pounds at birth. He gained weight at a steady rate for the first seven months until his weight reached 538 pounds. How much did he gain each month? We could use the equation y equals mx plus b to find out how much weight he gained each month with y equal to the total number of pounds after seven months, which is 538 pounds. m is the unknown weight gained per month. x is the number of months, which is seven, so we can substitute a seven for x. And b would be the weight at birth. We can substitute the b with 132 pounds, or 132. Next, we can subtract 132 from both sides of the equal sign, and that leaves us with 406 equals 7m. Finally, we can divide both sides by 7, and that leaves us with m equals 58. That means that each month the baby giraffe gained 58 pounds. Problem number four. Six teams are out on the field playing soccer. The teams all have the same number of players. The head coach asks for two players from each team to come help him move some equipment. Now there are 78 players on the field. Write and solve an equation whose solution is the number of players on each team. Here's my equation. The 6 stands for the 6 teams that are playing soccer on the field. The X stands for the unknown amount of players on each team. The minus 2 represents 2 players from each team leaving the field to help the coach move some equipment. And the 78 represents the number of players altogether who remain on the field playing soccer. Let's divide both sides by 6 so that we have x minus 2 on the left and 78 divided by 6 on the right. That leaves us with x minus 2 equals 13. Finally, we can add 2 to both sides. That leaves us with x equals 15. That means that each team has 15 players. Problem number five, from seventh grade unit four, lesson seven. A small town had a population of 960 people last year. The population grew to 1,200 people this year. By what percentage did the population grow? This is like a double number line with the number of people across the top and the percentage across the bottom. 
The population stretched from 960 to 1200. We have to find the difference. 1200 minus 960 is 240. And 240 divided by 960 is equivalent to one fourth or 0 0.25, which is 25 hundredths. 25 hundredths is equivalent to 25%. So this was an increase of 25%. That means that the population grew by 25%. We can also use the double number line to help us easily find the answer. We know that 100% of the population was 960. So we can find 960 and then underneath it we can write 100%. 50% of 960 would be 480, so we can find 480, and underneath that we can write 50%. We know that half of 50% is 25%, and half of 480 is 240, so underneath 240 we can write 25%. Since the difference between 1200 and 960 is 240, and 240 is 25% of 960, we know that the population grew by 25%. Problem number six from seventh grade unit four, lesson seven. The gas tank of a truck holds 30 gallons. The gas tank of a passenger car holds 50% less. How many gallons does it hold? That would be 50% of 30 gallons. We can rewrite this as 0 0.50 times 30. And of course that equals 15. That means that the gas tank of a passenger car holds 15 gallons of gas. 50% of 30 also means half of 30. And since 15 is half of 30, then we know that the passenger car's gas tank holds 15 gallons of gas. We can also figure this out easily by using the double number line. We know that 100% of the tank is 30 gallons. So above 100%, we can write 30 gallons. Since the passenger car holds 50% less, basically we need to find 50% of 30. Well, we know that halfway between 0% and 100% is 50%. So to find 50% of 30, we need to find the number that's halfway between 0 and 30. That would be 15. So above 50%, we can put a 15. This tells us that the passenger car's gas tank holds 15 gallons of gas. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.